This is your captain. Our mission. To seek out new life. Push the boundaries of what is known. And what is possible. Your presence is blasphemy. Let's talk about this. Find some comfort. I think that went well. Perhaps we should kiss. That seems logical. Maybe we don't touch anything else. Just a suggestion. No one can know the future. One can only follow one's instincts. You're the best of Starfleet. Our ability to work together, that's our greatest strength. Let's show them what you got. Hey nerds, I'm Will Wheaton. I play Wesley Crusher in the Next Generation Timeline, and I host The Ready Room, your official behind the scenes hub for all things Star Trek universe in this timeline. I am delighted to beam into your homes to celebrate the premiere of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, a brand new series that takes place in the years before Captain Kirk assumed command of the Enterprise in Star Trek the original series. Today, we're taking a closer look at this fresh edition of the Star Trek universe, which has been in the works for 55 Five years, at least in the hearts and minds of my fellow Star Trek fans. This includes a glimpse at how the series came to be, what exactly you can expect from it, and how composer Jeff Russo crafted an all-new theme. I also speak with Celia Rose Gooding, who plays Strange New World's younger version of Nyota Uhura, and co-showrunner and executive producer Henry Alonzo Myers to discuss bringing a brand new interpretation of this legendary character to modern audiences. But before we get to any of that, I had a chance to sit down with Anson Mount, who plays Captain Pike, along with co-showrunner and executive producer Akiva Goldsman, about jumping into a new series. Control room, engage. I am now joined by the newest captain of the Enterprise, Anson Mount, and Star Trek Strange New Worlds executive producer, Akiva Goldsman. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me here in the ready room today. Anson, you are now not just a Starfleet captain, you are the captain of the Enterprise, and you carry that for the rest of your time on this planet. What does that mean to you? Uh, well, it's, look, it, look. <laughs> I mean, this is ridiculous, right? Yeah. yeah. It, it's, uh, you, you grow up watching the sh show and it, the idea of being the captain of the Enterprise is it's just something that is so left field that, it, it never even occurs to you to put it on your bucket list, and then it's happening. It, it's there is not a day that goes by that I'm not on set and I look around and go, I'm on freaking Star Trek. <laughs> I'm not just on Star <laughs> Trek. I'm the captain of the Enterprise. It's like me. That's insane. It's uh, it is so surreal. But you got to get past that so you can do your job. <laughs> you know, you got to eventually you got to you got to say, why? OK, why not me? If not me, somebody else. So why not me? Let's go with it. Hope that they, they keep buying what I'm doing because <laughs> I don't feel like a captain in my everyday life. <laughs> Akiva, we can see Anson is sitting on what really looks like the bridge of the Enterprise. And um, I uh, am just crazy about the little details that go into bringing our sets to life. I know I am not the only nerd who watches Strange New Worlds and is doing tons of freeze framing to get <laughs> a closer look at how you have brought this classic starship into our modern era. Anything you want to share about the design philosophy and how you worked with your art department to make this ship real? Uh, the Enterprise is put together by a lot of people who spent a lot of time imagining themselves on the Enterprise. So what we did is we tried to evoke the experience of watching TOS, but with the grammar available to us today. So it still has to be aspirational. It still has to pull you into an imagined future. And so, you know, uh, there's a lot of that, of sort of uh, kind of almost the gut test of designing and looking and designing and looking. But what Anson, can tell you uh, is that when we were making the pilot, um, because of COVID, uh, we weren't done. 
So not only did we have to split the episode and shoot half of it at the beginning and half at the end of the season. Oh, no way. And there are some sets, I won't tell you which ones, that we shot on that were missing walls, um, that we were really building the Enterprise around shooting on the Enterprise, which was uniquely fascinating and kind of delightful and awful at the same time. Um, that's fascinating to me. From the angelic vocals of the original series to the timpani drums of Star Trek Voyager, every Star Trek theme is unique and special in its own way while paying homage to where it all began in 1966. And Star Trek Strange New Worlds is no exception. Main title composer Jeff Russo took a minute to give us some insight into the method behind the music. Take a look and a listen. The theme music for Star Trek is iconic. We're always like singing it on set. We'll like do some like Star Trek-y thing and then start humming it. There are certain things that happen on this show where you get reminded of the original series and one of them is the music. It's goosebumps every time. One of the greatest parts about this show is how close we are to the original series in terms of the timeline. We're directly preceding what will happen in the original series. So one of the things I talked about with Henry and with Alex about writing the theme for this incarnation is to really evoke the same things that the original series evokes. So I, I took a little from Alexander Courage's original theme and then sort of tried to come up with melodies and harmonic content that really still evoked all that same stuff, but was sort of a deconstruction of what will come in the next series, which would be the original series. The idea is, is always to try to connect everything, and I went back and forth between whether or not I would use a, a human voice in the theme or if I wanted to use a theremin, and the theremin obviously also evokes the idea of, of a voice. So I thought it was a really good idea to use something like that as just a splash at the very end to see how we can really connect the theme from the original series and the theme from this one. The idea that we can touch on all that stuff is just such fun for us. Stick around after the break when we take a look at Star Trek Strange New World's path from initial concept to series premiere. What's the mission? We explore. We seek out new life and new civilizations. Cool. Reuniting with Anson and Rebecca on our own series, it's a dream. We do want to get back to a, a classic feeling in every way. Not just the sets, not just the costumes, but in the structure of storytelling that we discovered with the original series. The fun thing about Star Trek Strange New Worlds is every episode stands alone and we will literally be visiting Strange New Worlds in every episode. Welcome back and welcome aboard, everyone. There's many steps along the way to a show getting made. The first is that you pitch it. Then if they buy it, you write a script. And then if they like the script, you get to make the pilot. And then oftentimes the pilot can get made but not picked up, which means they decide not to go forward with the show. Or they pick it up and now you're at series. Definitely something out there, Captain, headed this way. So if you really think back to the history of this particular story, Kirk and Spock and Uhura, they went on to the original series and then many iterations of Trek. Captain Pike, however, and number one, didn't. Let's get back to the ship. If you consider the cage, the original pilot of Star Trek, to be the pilot, which is basically what we're doing, it's the story of Captain Pike, number one, and Spock on the original Enterprise. This is the longest pilot to series pickup in the history of television, something like 55 years. The creation of Strange New World uh, really began on the set of Star Trek Discovery. Alex Kurtzman is an old friend of mine and he asked me to come in and I knew nothing about what the show was. And the internet speculated that it would be a show about Pike and Number One. So I got to set and discovered that Discovery had nothing to do with Captain Pike or Number One. And at that moment, I said, that's what we should do. By the end of season one, we got the Enterprise in, and by the top of season two, Captain Pike, number one, and Spock suddenly moved into the show. It was not lost on me that when you went down to the Klingon moon of Boreth, you returned a changed man. So at the end of season two of Discovery, Christopher Pike 
has been shown his future, which is um, not what he would have hoped for himself. But there was no time to deal with that at the end of season two because there's so much to deal with in the moment. So at the beginning of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, the question for us really was, how does a person move on with their life? How do they play that, that game of life when the outcome is already determined? You saw the future. I saw my own death, Spock. That's obviously much more Captain Pike's journey, uh, but I feel that Spock is also helping him to process it. You must seek out the good in knowing your own death. Use it to be the man you most essentially are. And who's that, Spock? The captain. Spock will still be wrestling with his humanity. He's Vulcan and human, he's these almost adversarial qualities. And he's constantly searching for balance between the two. Is everything all right, Captain? We're going back out. Number one's gone missing. Number one doesn't do downtime very well. The Enterprise has been at space dock. Everyone's do, trying to do downtime, but Una has taken a mission on her own and uh, she gets herself into a little bit of trouble and uh, needs some help. Uhura Chapel. <laughs> we're introducing these characters that were pre-existing characters from the original series, but this takes place before the original series, so they're younger versions of those characters. Cadet Uhura, very happy to have you aboard. Glad to be here. So we all know Uhura as the communications officer of the USS Enterprise, but I have the joy of meeting her at the beginning of her time on the Enterprise as a young cadet. We know Uhura as someone who is very poised and very sure of herself. We see her in the original series and I get the fun part to play everything before that. I get to do the unsurety and I get to do the messiness. And I think as an actor, that's where a good chunk of the richness is. Doc! Please dispense some wisdom. Okay. Never get the house dressing. I'm playing Dr. Mbenga. He's a brilliant doctor. He's quite confident. What drew me to this character was the, the vulnerabilities underneath. I received your orders, Captain. This is Nurse Chapel. Nurse Chapel is the head nurse on the Enterprise. I'm gonna mess with your genome. You first. She has an insatiable lust for life. She's very curious, very playful. Is it safe? Almost every time. I think that what drives her most is seeking and celebrating the true core of the people around her. No sedatives. Maybe I wasn't clear about the, the terrible pain part. Maybe I wasn't clear when I said no. Laon is the chief of security on the Enterprise. She is a very guarded character because of what she's been through in her life. She's scared of opening up. Ready, Lieutenant Ortegas. You bet. Erica is the helmsman on the USS Enterprise. She's really good at her job, fiercely loyal to her crewmates, and she takes her job really seriously, but you wouldn't necessarily know it. Transporters don't do that. Chief, it's Ortegas. Find a way to make them do that. I really dig her. <laughs> Hammer is the chief engineer. He is uh, an alien, an Enar, which is a subspecies of the Andorian people who are the blue aliens with the antenna. And uh, Hammer is a genius. He knows it, and he's not afraid to tell you so. It's dead quiet out there. Fascinating. I'm all ears. Figure of speech. Star Trek Strange New Worlds is in an episodic format. Each episode, there's a new event or there's a new adventure, and they're disconnected from one another. Except for the characters, right? The characters are living all of these experiences out. The episodes are self-contained, just like TOS was. That's what I enjoyed about the original. It was a different adventure every episode. To really pay homage to that, I think, is really, really exciting for old and new Star Trek fans alike. I personally appreciate being able to just watch an episode and being like, cool. It's really exciting as an actor. We get to play different genres. Every episode is just, it's so complete and so satisfying. Energize. Star Trek is this enormous cultural institution and to be able to contribute to that as an artist is just such an honor. Strange New Worlds will reunite fans new and old with the experience of commonality and of adventure and, and of joy because ultimately Star Trek is at its heart optimistic and foot forward when it comes to the future.
That's sort of been our mission statement, how to use a Roddenberry style of science fiction to tell stories that come from an optimistic place about our future. As a lifelong Star Trek fan, there's a nostalgia to it that I appreciate. I pinch myself because I wonder if I'll have this again in my career. I'm humbled every time I walk onto the set with these people. They are so utterly committed and excited about being a part of this world. Hit it. From the moment they appeared on Star Trek, fans of Captain Pike, Spock, and Number One have been hoping they'd get their own series. So when Strange New Worlds was announced, we were elated. And then, because it wasn't cool enough, we found out that they aren't the only legacy characters who will be in Strange New Worlds. Nyota Uhura joins the crew of the Enterprise, fresh out of Starfleet as a cadet. I spoke with actress Celia Rose Gooding on stepping into this iconic role, as well as with co-showrunner and executive producer Henry Alonzo Myers on filling in the backstory of a beloved, legendary character. Here's what they had to say. Celia, you know the historical and cultural significance of Uhura. Tell me what it means to you to step into this iconic role. I mean, besides the obvious level of humility and honor and excitement. It, it is such a groundbreaking opportunity for me as someone who is a direct product of Nichelle's legacy. I think the fact that she was one of the first women to, Black women specifically, to play a role of non-servitude, it was opening the, the scope of what Black women could do in film. And so without her, I would not of course be playing this character, but I don't think I would be an actor truly. So it is, I, I try not to think about it too much because I get incredibly overwhelmed and excited, but it's-, it's it I means, really understand that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it means more to me than I could possibly put words to. I just hope I'm doing it justice. Henry, we have talked about how Celia has interpreted uh, all of these ideas and brought this Uhura to life. And a lot of that comes from the work you are doing as the showrunner. You know how important all of this is. You know that as someone who is in charge of these legacy characters, they're not your characters the way we writers think of characters as being our characters, right? These characters kind of belong to Star Trek. And you get to mold them and put your mark on them and move them around in ways that like the rest of us only get to do with our action figures. Talk to me, <laughs> uh, talk to me a little bit about approaching developing backstories for legacy characters. Television is a collaboration. It, sure. It's a deep, deep collaboration. And so like, for instance, with approaching Uhura, we felt it was important to really show a different perspective. Uh, and we had this unique opportunity to show an Uhura who is different from any Uhura that we'd seen before. Someone who is young, who is uh, uh, good at what she does, but not as not the assured future captain that she will eventually become. Um, but like a, a an entry point character. The job that we, the way that we approach the job on the show tends to be, we're trying to make the show that we would want to see. Um, and to that extent, it's about creating what I hope are interesting situations for our talented actors and directors, uh, and then letting them play, mm -hmm. you know? And then we get their incredible work back and we shape it and hone it a little bit, but like, it's all there. I mean, I, I can't tell you when, <clears throat> when I remember when Celia auditioned and she was Uhura. She may not realize it at the time, but she was <laughs> Uhura in that moment. Celia, did you realize it? Or or like all actors, were you like, well, I blew it? No, I, I had no idea who I was auditioning for when I was auditioning. I knew it was in the Star Trek universe. Yeah. I knew she was young. I knew she was brilliant. I knew she yeah. was a linguist and, and, and a communicator. And I was like, oh, cool, I, I can do this. And then um, I started meeting with Henry and Akiva and, and, I, and I was like, this feels like this is gonna be much bigger than I could ever comprehend. And then I remember going to one of my initial fittings and getting a phone call of like, hey, 
So um, Yabo is not real. That's not a real person. You're actually playing young Uhura. And I gasped so hard that my Uber driver looked back at me and was like, are you okay? And I'm like, yes. Um, wait, wait, hold on. Was, you were going to the fitting when you found out you were playing Uhura? That's amazing. Yeah. That is so cool. I know for a fact that if I knew who I was auditioning for, my tape would have been completely different. And so I am both like flabbergasted and eternally grateful for the fact that I had no idea who I was auditioning for until well after I'd already booked the role. Celia and Henry were so lovely. I hope they're with us for five seasons in a movie. Stay tuned for more about the all new series, Star Trek Strange New Worlds. I am honored and humbled to have had the opportunity to share with you my excitement for the brilliance that is Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Brand new episodes stream weekly on Thursdays, exclusively on Paramount Plus. And when you're done with each episode, hop on over to the Ready Room where we will talk about all the behind the scenes action. Until next time, I'm Will Wheaton. Live long and prosper. Captain Pike to the bridge. There is a problem. We have less than one hour before the comet will impact. There will be no survivors. Let's get it done, people. We've got a planet to save before breakfast. Weapon up. Over with me. Don't want anyone flying off into space. I know you had a vision of the future. Maybe your fate isn't written. Captain, we have incoming. Their ships are fast and their weapon systems. Let's just say we don't want to piss them off. Confrontations with our mortality can be a unique opportunity. You did not intend on being here. Will you rise to the job? Was that your version of a pep talk? Yes. What the hell did this? Laanta Bridge. Raise shields now! When we seek out the unknown, we will find things that challenge us, but we do not back down. I can't control it. It's good to get mad sometimes. It makes you human. Be vigilant, get creative. A magic of science. We are bonded forever by the family that is Starfleet. Let's get to work.